Hi. Um, I wanted to do a video for you tonight. Uh, Seattle City Councilwoman Kashma Shawant is back in the news again, but uh, people, there's a lot of people that are down on her because she's socialist. She says democratic socialist, but um, I thought I would uh, I would get on the internet and I would look up the different forms of socialism and just to kind of give you an idea that socialism is not just communist socialism. Socialism is like um, supposing you're at work and you packed a huge lunch bigger than you normally would eat for some odd reason you packed a big lunch and there's a guy that's just new to the job um, I'll give you a better example than that uh, about four years ago me and a friend of mine were working through a temp service and we were working at a, a factory warehouse where they take bolts of fabric and we put those bolts of fabric together in boxes and we ship them to various Walmarts well the night before we were going to work we had stopped at a place to have dinner um, St. Stephen's at that time we were on a budget shoestring budget me and my friends so we had to stop and we had to get free dinner uh, that was given out to people so we took this free dinner and I asked the ladies at the counter, I said, me and my friend's going to work tomorrow. Is it possible, since we don't have enough money to buy lunch, that you can give us something for tomorrow? And they were having taco salad that night, which the taco salad was really, really good. So anyway, they packed up a great big, huge container of taco salad. I mean, it was huge. So the next day, me and my friend decided uh, to take it with us when we went to, to work. We broke off to have lunch, and lo and behold, there was a new guy that didn't have any money for lunch. He didn't have any money for a soda or any of that. And I had a few dollars in my pocket, so I bought my friend and myself a soda, and then we asked the guy if he had had anything to eat, and he said no. He was kind of shy, so we grabbed the plate, we gave him some of our taco salad after we heated it up, there was enough taco salad to feed three people and make us full. And I bought him a soda to boot. So that is a form of socialism. Because if you know somebody that doesn't have and you help them with something that you have extra of and you do it of your own free will, that is a form of socialism. It's not just about uh, being... Uh, uh, communist where you're a dictator and you force it on everybody where everybody just gets free stuff and nobody pays the bill it's about helping somebody that doesn't have something like if God blesses you with a larger house or if God blesses you with enough money to buy a larger house and you've already got a house should you buy the larger house or should you help somebody that doesn't have a house now it says here, socialism is a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership and de democratic control of the means of the production, as well as the political theories and movements associated with them. Social ownership may refer to forms of public collective or cooperative ownership, or to or to citizen ownership of equal e equity. Citizen or to um, citizens ownership of equity basically no matter what you put into it as long as you put something into it it's split up equally amongst everybody so that way everybody has something uh, Pepsi uh, back in the day even back in the old uh, uh, spiritual days, back in the old Hebrew days, if you want to get biblical about it, which I do at times, uh, I'm not forcing this down anybody's throat, so please don't take offense, but when the old Israeli days, the old Jewish days, people would gather up stuff in the, in the warehouses, in the storehouses, because in times of need, 
people, whether you were able to give or not give, you would be able to get equally. Um, it didn't mean that you were getting away with doing nothing and getting something because nobody does nothing for nothing. So, if you gave, say, 10%, and that's all you could give, maybe you need to get back 20%, and you could get that. It says here, there are many varieties of socialism, and there is no single definition encapsulating all of them. Though social ownership is the common element shared by its various forms. Socialist economic systems can be further divided into non-market and market forms. The word socialism thus refers to a broad range of theoretical and historical socio-economic systems and has also been used by many political movements throughout history to describe themselves and their goals, generating numerous types of socialism. Different self-described socialists have used the term socialism to refer to different things, such as an economic system or a type of society, a philosophical outlook, a collection of moral values and ideas, or even a certain kind of human character. Some definitions of socialism are very vague, while others are so specific that they only include a small minority of the things that have been described as socialism in the past. There have been numerous political movements which call themselves socialists under some definition of the term. Some of these interpretations are mutually exclusive and all of them have generated debates over the true meaning of socialism. Basically, you, you can use socialism for whatever reason you want to. If you hate socialism, you'll find an excuse for it. Early interpretations of socialism, it was coined in the 1830s and it was used first to refer to a philosophical or moral belief rather than any specific political view. For example, Alexandria Vennett, who claimed to have been the first person to use the term, defined socialism simply as the opposite of individualism. Socialism basically means you're being social. You're being a collective. Y'all are thinking toward one goal. Um, and in a way, even though America was set up as a republic, in a way it was kind of set up to be socialist because we were all supposed to have one goal. We were all supposed to be working toward that goal. Basically, it was individualistic socialism because although we had the freedom to be ourselves, we all worked toward the goal of making America a better place. We all worked toward the goal of America being true to its original foundation, which was what the Founding Fathers created when they did the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. When we had inalienable rights, that was the, the cornerstone of all of the rest of it. The life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That is a cornerstone of our, uh, of our country, of our republic. So basically we are a individualistic socialism. It says here, Robert Owen also viewed socialism as a matter of ethics, though he used it with a slightly more specific meaning to refer to the view that human society can and should be improved for the benefit of all. We believed in that too. America should be for the benefit of all. Now when I say that, at the time we had slaves. I hate slavery. We have, we have reaped major benefits out of slavery. We have had speeches by Martin Luther King. We've had music by Ray Charles and James Brown. We've had Motown. We've had the Isley Brothers. We've had uh, Aretha Franklin. We've had all this beautiful, all this beautiful stuff. Denzel Washington, James Earl Jones, uh, movies. We've had Sidney Poitier. 
all of this glamorous, gorgeous stuff came out of something as ugly as so, as ugly as slavery. At that time, that was what was common. They that's just something they did. They had slaves. They didn't think anything about it. Although there's probably some people that felt that it was wrong. For the most part, everybody felt it was right, even though it was not right. So, but. We were trying to make America better today for future America tomorrow by improving the things that we did wrong yesterday. So in order to do that, uh, we in a way have to become a collective. Now we're not a collective. Right now we're not socialists. We're not being social or sociable. We are being very individualistic. We have the Republicans on this side. We have the Democrats on this side. Um, we have, and Washington warned us about a two-party system. It was, a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. America is very divided. Instead of working toward one goal, like, yeah, I'm a Republican. Yeah, you're a Democrat. But this is the, the problem we have. We need to come up with a solution. It doesn't matter which side came up with it. As long as it gets fixed for the betterment of the people that it's supposed to fix or it's supposed to help. It says here, um, Pierre Joseph Prodhan claimed that socialism is a very, is every aspiration towards an amoralization of society. And and moralization of society. I don't understand what that word is, so I can't explain that. But if you know what it means, or if you know what I'm saying, you'll understand that. And maybe you can drop a comment down and say, hey, this is what that meant. In the first half of the 19th century, many writers who described themselves as socialists and who would be later called utopian socialists wrote down descriptions of what they believed to be ideal human society. Some of them also created small communities to put their ideas into practice. A constant feature of these ideal societies was social and economic equality, which meant that everybody, no matter if you're rich or poor, you are treated the same. Which, in a way, I don't I kind of, I don't really agree with that. I don't think that the rich should push the poor out. I don't think the rich should stop on the poor but if you've worked hard and you've gained a lot of, and you've earned a lot of money there's perks that come with that eating at more upscale restaurants per se like big seafood restaurants like I live in Minneapolis now so we've got this restaurant called the ocean here and to get uh, to get dinner which would be like swordfish uh, would be an upscale um, high-end steaks like uh, the ribeye tomahawk a steak and things of that nature and uh, uh, huge snow crabs and various things that you can't get at Red Lobster. Uh, you go to this restaurant and it's very, very expensive. If you've worked hard and you've earned the money to enjoy going there, that's fine. More power to you and I hope you enjoy it. But if a person is, uh, is low income, I don't think they should be income discriminated. But I don't think they should be treated the same as the one that works hard and makes a lot of money as long as the person that's working hard and making the money is not trying to hurt anybody else. I don't believe that the poor should be treated the same as the rich. I believe that the poor should be the poor, but that the poor should be allowed to survive and have a life, not just scrape by. I think that the middle class should have a life. It says here, some of them also created, okay, a constant feature of these, okay, a constant feature of these ideal societies was social and economic equality. Because these people who proposed the creation of such societies called themselves socialists, the word socialism came to refer not only to a certain moral doctrine, but also to a type of 
allegatorian society based on such document. Based on such doctrine. Other early advocates of socialism took a more scientific approach by favoring social leveling to create a meteor meteorocratic, meteorocratic society based upon freedom for individual talent to prosper. I have a hard time with some words, such as Count Henry de Saint Simon, who was fascinated by the enormous potential of science and technology and believed a socialist society could eliminate the disorderly aspects of capitalism. He advocated that the creation of a society in which each person was ranked according to his or her capacities and rewarded according to his or her work. The key focus on this early socialism was on administrative efficiency and individualism and a belief that science was the key to progress. Simone's ideas provided a foundation for scientific economic planning and technocratic administration of society. Now, I used to think, and I still kind of do, and this kind of bugs me, I think that the ones that work the hardest, the ones that do the greatest amount of work should get paid the most money. People that tear up the roads and repair the roads, keep the roads going, people that uh, work in restaurants doing dishwashing, people that clean the streets, people that drive the city buses and things of that nature, doctors, which a lot of, there's some doctors in private practice that make good money, but there's some doctors that aren't and they don't make enough. Police, they don't make enough. Uh, firefighting, they don't really make enough. I'm under the impression that if you work really, 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 really hard, you should make loads and loads of cash. And the ones that are sitting on their lazy duff working in a bank shouldn't make as much money. But then again, that's my personal opinion, and there's absolutely no way that that's going to happen. It says here, other early socialist thinkers such as Thomas Hodkin and Charles Hall based their ideas on David Ricardo's economic theories. They reasoned that the equilibrium value of commodities approximated to price changes by the producer, the producer when those commodities were in elastic supply and that these producers' prices corresponded to the embodiment, embodied labor. The cost of the labor, essentially the wages paid, that was required to produce the commodities. The Richard Socialist, the Ricardian, the Ricardian, the Ricardian Socialists viewed profit, interest, and rent as deductions from their exchange value. These ideas embodied early conception, conceptions of market socialism. Now, um, it says here, after the advent of Karl Marx's theory of capitalism and scientific socialism, socialism became to be referred to as ownership and administration of the means of production by the working class, either through the state apparatus or through independent cooperatives. In Marxist theory, socialism refers to a specific stage of social an economic development that will displace capitalism and characterized by coordinated production, public or cooperative ownership of capital, diminishing class conflict and inequalities that spawn from such the end of wage labor with a method of compensation based on the principle of from each according to his ability to each according to his contribution. That was an early form of socialism. Now, a lot of people give socialism a bad rap. And when I say that, they want you to believe that socialism is communist, and it's not. It can be, depending on which country is using it. China would be considered a socialistic republic. 
and it's the Republic of China. Now, America tries to distance itself from using the word republic, but we were set up as a republic. Yeah, we were. We were set up as a capitalistic republic. And a capitalistic republic is a lot different than a socialist republic. A capitalistic republic means that you work hard, you make your money, you're not limited to the amount of money you can make. It's not like uh, if you're in an apartment building and they say to live here, you can only make this much money. If you make more than that, you're kicked out. In a, uh, in a capitalistic republic, that means that you can make as much money as you want. Like where I live at now, my apartment building, you had to have a certain amount of money that you made uh, in order to uh, move in. But once you moved in, you could turn around and you can make as much money as you want. And you can make as much money as you want. And there's nothing that they will do to stop you from living here because you're grandfathered in. That's capitalism in a way. That's capitalism um, because you can make as much money as you want. And it's not going to affect your status in life. It'll help your status in life. It'll help you further yourself up the ladder. It'll help you get better if you choose to. Get a better house, get a better car, get a better lifestyle. You can also use the capital that you gain to help somebody else get up the ranks. But uh, Kashima Sawant, which I'm going to do another video to follow up on this video here, because it's coming up to the 20-minute mark, getting close. And I want to try to keep my video shorter so that way it can, um, my videos can uh, be easier to read, to listen to. Anyway, um, if you like my videos, you like them, subscribe. Please, if you have any kind of ideas of things that I can do for a future video, post it. If you like my videos, post it and say, hey, your videos were great. Or if you don't like them and, and, and you want to know how I, and you got an idea how I can fix it, or you just don't like my videos, just say, hey, man, you're a snooze. Post that. I'll thank you for posting, and I'll thank you for trying my video. It's not for everybody. My videos are an acquired taste. Anyway, until the next video, have a good night, Seattle, and all points beyond. This has been All Things Considered, because I consider all things.